Hello there. So I'm going to give you a quick little tour of this planner that I created. Um, I primarily created this with virtual assistants in mind because we tend to do a lot of small tasks for a large number of people. And a lot of the planners that are out there are, hey, like list your three most important things and they don't really have enough space. And even still, like this little planner that you can buy from me doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to list every single task. Um, but it kind of gives you like this little like ballpark of, hey, approximately this time I'll be working on so-and-so's work. And then it starts to allow you to see, well, am I trying to put 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag? And that can hopefully help save you some stress and anxiety. And virtual assistants, I think um, in particular, are very service driven. And it's very easy for us to get forget about ourselves and to take care of, um, basically to take care of us, um, especially if we're moms, because not only do we have our clients, but we have our kids. So what you're going to purchase from me is going to be an Excel document. You can upload the Excel document into Google Spreadsheets, for example, if you want. Um, and I'll very quickly at the end of this video show you how to do that um, if you're not certain. Um, in my case, I do need this on the cloud. I need this to be a living, breathing document because someone I work with does need to check in throughout the day to kind of see like, hey, what are Michelle's priorities for the day? Um, that way, if she has questions, she knows if she should stay away or if it's probably okay to come to me. So this um, one tab is going to be the daily plan. And then um, the second thing that I'm keeping track of is the weekly tracking. Um, because one of the things that you'll hear me talk about um, is that I'm actually keeping track of my own hours in FreshBooks now as though I were my own client because I'm in the process of trying to determine if I can justify hiring a general administrative assistant. But in order to make a knowledgeable decision, I need to know what I'm doing, how much time I'm spending on it. Um, it's also making me really aware of where I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot with where I'm spending my time. And um, most of my existing client base is being charged 60 an hour. So it's very easy for me when I'm running this timer now to be like, okay, like basically I can figure out like a dollar a minute of my time is, so it's very easy math for me to use. And for example, the other day I was like writing reviews on Amazon and when I finished it was 12 minutes and I was like, what the hell? Like that was not worth 12 minutes of my time. And I realized immediately, like this is something I'm eliminating from my life. This isn't serving me at all. And it's not getting me closer to any of my goals. So the process of actually doing that, I've only been doing this for two weeks, keeping track of my own time, but it's been incredibly eye-opening. And I would suggest to anyone, really, not just virtual assistants, but start kind of keeping track of that time. So that's the second tab here. And then, of course, the third thing that we'll be talking about, and you'll see throughout this video, is fresh books because that's where a lot of the stuff is taking place. And I'm just putting it into my plan. So here we go. A little sample sheet put up here together. And I just duplicate this as I go along every day of the week. I typically print it out when I'm all finished. I love paper. I love, love paper. Yet um, as much as I love digital, um, there are some things I have to still touch. And my to-do list is one of those things I still just have to touch. So real quick, the left-hand side is for... Um, the what's happening throughout the day. Right hand side is a little recap and some little mainly like personal area. So that's more like my statistics reminders area. Now I also want to like throw in here really quick. Um, I keep track of what I actually need to do, like the specific tasks for clients. All that, like what I need to do is still being tracked in Asana. Um, there are a lot of great systems out there. Um, just make sure whatever you're using um, is not um, a system that is too clunky and that you're using it the way it needs to be used and stuff. And this by no means is, this is not intended to be a replacement for that at all. So real quick, um, obviously you can change colors to whatever matters or whatever means most to you. I'm in the process right now of like trying to show myself more self-love, which is why I chose the pink color for my own stuff and the little blue green. Those are things that have me at my desk doing actual work, but they're not actually probably going to be billable items. And then all the plain stuff, 
all the white, it's typically billable type things. So I have this set up 8 a.m. Um, to 8 p.m. set up in 30 minute increments. Of course, you could change these time slots to something. Um, the main reason why I chose 30 minute increments is because when I print this off, that's what fits well on one eight by 11 sheet of paper. So if you weren't printing, um, or if you are going to print, just keep that in mind. Um, you could certainly obviously shorten or lengthen the time, that type of thing. Um, so I have the times, they're in half hour increments. Um, for client work, I do try to estimate how long I think it's going to take. Then when I'm finished with my FreshBooks timer, I see what reality was. And there are times that what I believe and what reality is aren't even remotely close. In this particular case, I was under. I was like, yay, like I got some extra time, I can work on something else. There are other times that I'm way short. So it's just a little bit revealing for me and incredibly helpful for me to start getting a sense of, well, like right now my trend is I am a lot more optimistic on how quickly I can get something done than what I actually can. Um, you notice a couple of these here don't have any end time. Um, that's because if you go down to the bottom, I have this little teeny note section for things that I really need to call attention to. So for example, I did not have this work scheduled for Friday, but I ended up, it became a priority and it was more important than these two things. And it ended up taking me 105 minutes and that's just shy of two hours. Um, so that is why I didn't get this work done. And I can't remember what else about Friday. Um, I should have written the notes down before I left for the day, but there was something else that came up on Friday. It was kind of a, just a, oh yeah, someone like needed my help with some work, some website work I um, hired out. So I didn't get things really done the way I wanted to. So that's the left-hand side. Um, I do have on here, this lets me just kind of see where I'm at as far as like how many hours I think I'm going to be billing out. And I just have a reminder up here for myself that as a general rule of thumb, I cannot schedule myself for more than five billable hours a day because I will probably, probably won't happen. And if it does, like absolutely none of my own stuff, like I probably won't eat lunch or anything like that. Um, then the right hand columns, this is just a little information here, which that's self-explanatory. Um, with regards to the times, I normally just round to the nearest five minutes. I'm not on this, what I'm doing here for the purposes of planning does not need to be precise. So I put my start time, my end time. One really quick note, as you put these in, make sure that you're putting them in like you're actually here. Um, I'm just gonna put this here for a second, 9 a.m or 1 p.m. So make sure that you're putting it in that format in order for these formulas to work. Notice how the hours work there changed to seven hours, 15 minutes. So just make sure that you're typing it in properly. Otherwise, this whole little section isn't going to work the way it's intended. All right, um, 10.35 to 4.15, that really is what times I was at my desk on Friday. And here, this tells me that I worked for five hours, 40 minutes. Again, I'm just rounding to the nearest five. Um, this purpose is it's just a snapshot, not precise. So I'm going to put here 5.75. And now I need to get the actual hours I billed because what I worked at my desk is not what I'm actually billing clients for. And that's what I want to know. Like how much of my day was actually spent on billable time versus everything else. So this is where I need FreshBooks. So I've already pulled this report up in FreshBooks and it's basically... Here I can see 5.01, and I will tell you how to run this report. I just don't want to have it recorded in video because there's sensitive information there that I don't want seen by the general public, especially not from YouTube. Um, so I will tell you written out steps on how to run this in the actual blog post. So here we go. Um, total hours worked for the day, 5.01. Um, equals 5.01, that's total. Remember, I'm keeping track of my own time and I'm treating myself like a client. So I need to actually subtract out my tracked time, which in this case is 0.98 right here, because you can see my virtual assistant and the work I recorded for myself. So I'm gonna subtract that out because I'm not gonna be paying myself. And here I can see for the hours I spent at my desk, which was approximately 10.35 to 4.15 p.m. 
those hours, approximately 70% of those hours at my desk were hours billed to clients. Um, if I get to like 50%, like I'm happy at 50%, if I get to 60, I feel like, yay, I did pretty good. And if I get to like 70, I'm like, wow, like that's pretty amazing um, because that's incredibly unusual. And considering that Friday felt like a clusterfuck to me, figuring out now that actually 70% of my day was billable, like that actually makes me feel pretty darn good. Um, did I bill out as many hours as I'd like? No. Like I would have liked to have gotten to five, but the fact that 70% of the time I sat at my desk was billable, amazing. I love it. That's really good. Um, notes, reminders. These are, I, I have a whole notebook um, where I keep track of just random shit that doesn't deserve to be in Asana. Um, I do want to capture it so my mind isn't mulling it over and keeping track of it for me. Um, I actually have the little notebook is actually called Shiznit To Do. And I will take some of these things from Shiznit To Do and often put things here just as a little reminder like, hey, like these are things like I want to do a video on Deliver It. I need to write a blog post about Google Forms. So these little things I put here, if it's like a blog post, like I ran across this post here. I love the, the profit. I want to read this. I will link to the document so I don't have to chase it down or keep it in a separate spot. Like everything's right here. So it's ready to go. Um, this little section, um, I currently, um, as a result of reading a book, um, they challenge us to do what they refer to as a daily stretch. And that's not stretching your hamstrings. That's doing something that's slightly outside of your comfort zone. Um, so daily stretch and then ask. Um, I have a really challenging time, like asking people for things. And it doesn't necessarily mean asking for favors or anything. Um, and so throughout the day, like my whole thing is like, I want to try to do at least three a day um, of either a stretch or an ask. And sometimes like asking actually in and of itself is a stretch for me because it's not something that I feel comfortable doing. So you can see here, I asked a friend if he wanted to get together. And then I have a little other like you can tell I've got a lot of stuff, like a lot of little documents and stuff I want to read, blog posts. So that sums up this particular sheet. Um, I print it off every day. I keep track of stuff as I go. At the end of the day, I spend time going through. I'll make little notes if I need to so that I understand like if things felt weird, like why that was um, and all of that. So this is part one. Um, part two which is the weekly tracking. Um, that is this little sheet. Again, I just started keeping track of my own time for myself as of the week ending 1210. I'm again using FreshBooks information for this. And so on the time tracking tab from FreshBooks, you can see here for the week ending 1210, I worked 34.12 hours. 34.12 hours. Well, how many of those hours were my hours? In this case, 7.02, which is very similar to this report that we just spoke about for the daily planner sheet, except in this case, I'm choosing the whole week so I can see my time for the entire week, which this particular week, it was 7.02. And then these green columns, these are all mathematical functions. So client hours, um, 27.1. Um, I like to have at least 30. And if I hit 35, I feel like, wow, I'm doing really good. Um, but I like to have at least 30 billable hours. Average per day. I worked six days this particular week. Now let's go back. See, I have six days with hours recorded. So my average per day is six um, for client hours, not client and Michelle. And then right now, like my average rate um, with old clients that I grandfathered in at old rates and new rates, uh, my average is coming out to approximately 60 an hour. And so this allows me to see, well, this is approximately how much I earned this week. So I earned approximately 1626. A little bit of a note. Um, this was just for myself because later on down the road, I'd be like, well, why didn't I work Saturday the 10th? And why didn't I work? Sunday the 11th. So it's just a little note for myself, like, hey, I was out of town visiting a friend. I didn't work Saturday. I flew home, didn't work Sunday. And as time goes on, this obviously is going to get more and more filled up. And this is going to give me more and more information. 
and it's going to be incredibly useful as it goes by. And I'm actually invoicing myself in FreshBooks and the number that I saw for this first like approximate two weeks actually kind of made me puke. And my gut reaction at this point, only two weeks into this process is I would do myself a huge favor by hiring an assistant. Um, it's still too early to pull the trigger, but without a doubt, I'm getting a lot more clarity about what I'm doing like this. This week, I spent nearly 19 hours on my own stuff. Like, that's crazy. Um, a lot of that is stuff that I probably could have handed off to someone else. So numbers. If you love numbers, if you love planning, um, you could even take this once you purchase it and add little things that mean things to you. This is just how I'm doing this stuff, um, just to give you a guideline, essentially, and to save you, you know, time figuring out, testing the formulas and all that stuff, um, even if you value your own time at... 30 bucks an hour, this is easily, you know, the work I've put into this is easily a half hour, at least probably a little bit longer um, because I had to think through like what information do I need from FreshBooks and all of that stuff. So there's a lot of love that's been put into this and a lot of thought. And the last thing is I promised I would show you how to upload um, the Excel document that you purchase into Google Spreadsheets. So I have this little test folder set up. Um, I do want to say before you do any uploading, um, be really careful um, on how you have your settings set up. In my case, I do not use Google Drive to store um, Word or Excel documents. That's what I use Dropbox for. I strictly only use Google Drive for pretty much things that I need to collaborate on with others. And in that case, I do actually want Google Spreadsheets, not an Excel sheet uploaded to Google Drive. So you can change that under settings and uh, where is it at? Honestly, I don't even remember anymore where the settings are. Um, you have to dig around a little bit for that. You might already have it set up so that they automatically convert Excel into sp Google spreadsheets. And if for some reason you need help with it, let me know and I will track it down. So anyway, in this case, um, you're going to buy this file from me. It's going to download upon purchase. And then if you want to put the Excel sheet that you purchased for me into Google Drive, you're going to hit not, um, new and you're going to say file upload. And I will obviously have a much better name when you buy this. Um, it'll be something else, but this for now is what I have it called. Open, it's going to upload and it's going to think for a second. Here, this is now a Google spreadsheet. We can tell that by this icon. Um, I don't want a messy file name to have .xls at the end, so I'm going to rename this to something that makes sense for you. And now when you open this up, dun, 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 dun. here you go. Um, the very first thing, I'd suggest checking, just make sure that your times are working. Um, they did work in my earlier test and I'll show you here. So I'm gonna put in 8 a.m. All right, it's taking a while. To 5 p.m. because we all kind of know that time, right? And that's interesting. So that didn't change, but when I did my test earlier, it did. Um, so do, again, just make sure that that's working. If you upload it into Google Drive, oh, okay, apparently my computer is being slowed down right now um, because voila, there we are, nine hours. Um, so just make sure that's right because that will otherwise throw off um, this percent of billable time. And thank you so much for staying with me throughout this journey of the planners. And I really hope you enjoy them. I'd love your feedback, your ideas, how you've modified them to work for yourself. Um, what kind of quotes you put up here, your little touchstones. I would just absolutely love to hear from you. Have a fantastic day.